There's no place like home. Well, we're talking roses, and boy, do we have a lot of questions, especially after seeing the beautiful floats in the Rose Parade, right, It feels right, like Eric? Lance is talking me down off the Rose <laughs> suicide ledge. It's Eric really Stromer, helpful. Cindy Dole, Home Wizards. We're helping to improve your home and improve your life, and that's what Lance Walheim does always as the gardening guru, a horticulturist, and uh, author of so many books, including uh, Roses for Dummies. So, Lance, thanks for giving us some pointers. Why is January the special month for pruning roses? Is it really always January for Southern California or not? Well, well, you know, January to February is really the time you want to do it. I mean, it doesn't have to be any special weekend, but you want to do it during the shortest time of the year when, you know, hopefully temperatures have cooled off a little bit, which, of course, they haven't. I mean, the roses are still looking great. But you want to get them to slow that growth so that we can focus that energy into the spring bloom. So mm-hmm. you really got to – it's the time to do it. Okay. And it depends on the kind of rose in terms of uh, our technique. We were talking a little bit about uh, shrub roses and hybrid teas. But what about a climbing rose? Is there a certain kind of a method that we should be thinking about if we have, let's say, a trellis and the rose is kind of hanging overhead? Yeah, there, there certainly is. It's the, again, the, the rules are the same. But with the climbing rose, it, they're so much more vigorous. That the, it, things change. And we're going to be, you know, basically talking about large flowered climbers, which are the ones that bloom in spring and then are repeat, repeat bloomers. Um, you know, when I was at uh, Sunset Magazine, we had some great climbing roses along the fence in front of the, the headquarters there. And the way they did it was they almost pruned them like grapes. In other words, you take your strongest canes, and if you can, you train them horizontally. Um, and what that does is it causes the side shoots to grow along that cane that you've turned horizontally. And then so you get many more blooms. So whenever you can do that, so if you're looking at a big mass of climbing rows, cut it back to its healthiest canes like we were talking about it before. Mm-hmm. And if you can train those horizontally, um, and then as you, those canes grow out the side, and it really it's a good idea when you're doing something like this to get Um, you know, get a book like Roses for Dummies or go online to the American Rose Society so you can see illustrations of what I'm talking about. But then as those side shoots grow, you want to cut those back to two buds. And so basically what you're getting, you're getting, it's almost like a grape. You're getting a long cane, and then at each leaf there'll be a short little cane which will bloom. So um, that will really maximize the bloom. And you can, again, you can remove anything that's weak, anything that's crowded um, to make sure that we've got a good healthy, strong structure. And what about grandiflores? How do we well, prune them? Yeah, grandiflores are pruned pretty much like hybrid teas. They're, um, the ones that get a little different are when you start getting into the landscape shrub roses, the things like um, the knockout roses, or when you get into the floribundus like the iceberg. Um, you know, those you don't have, you can go ahead and prune them like a hybrid tea if you want, but you really don't have to go to that detail. All you can really, you really want to do is if you can cut those back with with head shears by a third to half, and then open up the center so it's not so crowded. That's really all you need to do. That's why, um, you know, these landscape shrubs are so great. You can just really be brutal with them. Mm-hmm. Okay, so Lance, I want to I want to relocate my hybrid tea roses. Right. And I, I put them in a new place. So didn't some landscape designer look at your garden and say and she, roses not so much? Yeah, they, she <laughs> she didn't like my roses. She thought they were old and ratty and just start over. But you know, I I, I like them. Yeah. Are, are they okay? I mean, they've probably been there for thirty years. I would imagine. Yeah, you know, at least. Um, roses can live for a really long time, and uh, just because they get thick and and big doesn't mean that they're they're in bad shape. Um, you know, a lot of times a cane will get pretty old, and you may want to renew the cane. In other words, if you can get a shoot to come from the base, um, you know, if you've noticed that that cane is not blooming as well as it used to, doesn't have a good cover of foliage, you might want to renew it with a, a new cane from the base. But I don't understand talk- that. How do you yeah, renew how do you the do cane? That? Yeah. Well, you basically, you know, a lot of times you have to make sure that you're, when you're selecting a new cane um, that you're not getting a sucker from the rootstock. Um, that will be a problem. But a lot of times, you know, when you do your pruning, um, you'll force new canes to come from the base of the plant. You may not see it in winter. You may see it next summer. So um, it's something that you're going to want to look for over the season. 
um, and it'll come from the base of the plant. And, um, you know, a lot of people also believe that um, by using cer- certain nutrients, you can encourage basal breaks is what they call them. Um, you know, but uh, I'm not so sure how effective that is. But so wait, by the base of the plant, do you mean the root ball essentially? Well, you know, you have to be able to de- when you look at a rose, you have to be able to determine where the bud union is. That's the place where the bud of the blooming variety is grafted or budded to the rootstock. Okay. You know, anybody who grows roses knows that oftentimes they can sucker from the rootstock, and you get a totally different looking plant. You probably get Dr. Healy, which is a red rose, very vigorous looks a little different totally right so you when you ch- select this basal break or this bud it's got to be above that uh, or, or on top of that bud union you know there'll be a center part of the rose that's all kind of gnarly and you want it to come from the top of that as opposed to below that i see okay mm-hmm. and, and so we only- can we can relocate roses okay as long as you go deep enough to protect the the root ball it's not going to shock the rose yeah you know this time of year after you've pruned it i mean you can a lot of people do that successfully um you know one thing that you can do that um in advance sometimes is do some root pruning in other words go with a shovel around the where you're going to dig it up so that you can cut those roots early on and maybe encourage some roots to grow within the root ball and maybe a little bit late to do that now but you know, as long as you can get as big a root ball as you can handle. I mean, it doesn't have to be giant, but, you know, do the best you can. You mean, you, mean sho- you mean shovel the plant out and get as much of the root matter into the wheelbarrow as possible? Yeah, well, what you, it depends on how far you're moving it, too. I mean, it may be easier just to put it on a sheet of plastic or a tarp or something and then and then drag, drag it. it over to where you're going to go. Oh, that's opposed, a good idea. As yeah. opposed to lifting it up when you may. But, again, these plants are tough. It's, they're they're going to be in their slow-growing season, so... Um, you should be successful in doing it. And then when you get it in the ground, make sure that you pay close attention to, you know, watering practices. Make sure it doesn't dry out, especially next spring when, you know, the weather gets hotter because it's going to have fewer roots. Um, well, you're saying that the rain forecast is not looking good, so we do need to pay attention to, to watering a little bit more for these roses, huh? Yeah, we do. I mean, it, it, almost everywhere in the garden, the um, you know, the predictions I'm seeing, we've already, at least especially up where I am, but, um, you know, we've had all this warm weather and it doesn't look like there's any rain in the forecast for the next couple Uh-oh. of weeks. So, Uh-oh. so wait, so Lance, so I've dug my hole. What do I do in? What do I put in the hole before the the new rose goes into it? You could work a little organic matter in there if you want to. Um, depends on how good your soil is in that area. Um, just make sure you get it at the same level. Um, then build a nice big basin around the outside of it, and so that you can fill that thing up with water and okay. make sure that it's properly watered. Then put a good mulch on top of it so you can keep the soil cool and conserve the moisture. Yeah. Um, and then just you know it it's going to slow down. I mean it's it's not going to be like it was the you know previously, but within a year, within a growing season, you should be right back where you started from. Should you okay. give it some food or something to kind you know, of let it get settled in, let it get, let settled. get it start off, and then once it starts growing, you can tell that you've got it made. Yeah, I'd start lightly fertilizing yeah. it. And what do you, and what yeah. do you like for the fertilizer? Well, you know, you can use whatever you want, and as a matter of fact, in this case, a good organic fertilizer might be a good choice. Okay because um, that's slow release and you're not going to give it any big boost. But the important thing is that you're giving it a nitrogen fertilizer. Nitrogen is what they're needed most. I put my coffee grounds on our rose bushes, like right at the base. Yeah, you can do that. Um, like my, my spent, my used coffee, sure. you know, does that work? Yeah, it can. Um, you know, it depends really on your soil pH. And um, also the 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 decaffeinated is it decaf or full bodied? <laughs> yeah, that's right. And, <laughs> My rose is like the full bodied coffee sure. better. Yeah. Right. I mean, you can. You have to be careful because you can alter your pH um, oh. to a point where it could be unhealthy Uh-oh. for the rose. Okay, don't want to do it that. It just depends on. You know, the, I would if I were you, what I would do is, uh, uh, you know, do a little research on uh, coffee grounds and okay. roses. If you Google it, you'll see what sure. the what well, the caveats are we only have a couple minutes left besides the uh the the sunshine daydream rose that we have to try is there one other rose that you have your eye on that we should consider to try for our our gardening experience this year you know there's a there's a couple new roses that are called um they're called lemonade um there's a there's a an iconic pink lemonade and there's an iconic lemonade and these are shrub roses landscape roses that um, have a darker center than the actual color of the rose. In other words, the one is a, a light pink and it has a red center, and the other one is yellow and it has a darker orange-yellow center. 
and they're really unusual. It's kind of rare in roses, at least it has been in the past, and so those might be fun to look at. I love the two-tone roses. Yeah. Yeah. And so um, it, it's almost like they've got a darker eye. And Neat. So, and, so, and then, Lance, if these, if these are not in existence at certain big box stores or nurseries, how, can, you, can you have these FedEx to you? you <laughs> there are certainly plenty of mail order sources of roses. Um, and, um, you know, so that, that's a great way to do it. And, okay. and, you know, this time of year they're sold bare root, so they can yeah. be, they're easily shipped across country. They don't have to be FedEx. I like to shop for the roses in the springtime and then buy them bare root later because, you don't, you know, it's, it's more magical to see the actual blooms. Well, that's right. It's kind of boring you, you, buying these sticks that look like, you know, well, the Midwest it's time of year. <laughs> yeah, yeah <laughs> you know, that's a, that's a good point. Yeah. Uh, they are less expensive yeah. when you buy them bare root. But, I know. Uh, well, uh, Lance, tell us to everybody, your website is Lance Wall. Com. Plus, you also have all kinds of great video tips at bayadvance.com. And uh, we can't wait to talk to you again. You hit it all, Cindy. Okay. Thanks, Eric. All right. Hey, Lance. Thanks, Good man. luck with your roses. Give yeah, me a call if you I, have any problems. You know what? Well, I'll, I got you on speed, doll. <laughs> you're going to be sorry you ever suggested that. <laughs> okay. So now you're going to have to get the, the Sunshine Daydream flower, yes. right? And yeah. we're going to try the, the, le- the, the lemonade. lemonade. Yep. And, and we know what colors mean, right? I mean, red and, is and romance. And by the way, that's a great tip that Lance came up with to move the, the rose bush or any garden material for that matter. Put it on a sheet of plastic and drag the plastic. It's much easier, especially mm-hmm. on the back. So I would recommend that. And the color of roses, you like the idea of what yellow means? Yes. Yellow means doggone it, I like you so much. <laughs> whereas red, Friendliness. Whereas red means I love you like crazy. Yeah, right? and, and lavender is also very peaceful and great. So many right. great colors. Oh, All right, yeah. well, check it. it out. We have more fun ahead as we continue here on Home Wizards. We're going to talk about a great way to change your fireplace. I mean, you've seen the new fire glass we've got going. I love that It's stuff. next here on Home Wizards. Eric Stormer, Cindy Dole. We're back right after this. Because I'm a lyrical poet. My name is on the scene just in case you didn't know it. My town, I created all the bass sounds. Welcome back, listening to Home Wizards. I'm Cindy Dole. I'm Eric Stromer. And you've seen my fireplace, Eric, right? Do you approve? It, it looks like beautiful crystalline gr- glass reflecting gorgeous rays it of light. It looks like Emerald City. Hello, it does. <laughs> so this is the thing. As you all know, we've been doing this kitchen project, and you can't stop with just the kitchen. I mean, we had this very claustrophobic 1970s appliances. I might even 19- go to oppressive. Oppressive? <laughs> Wow. <laughs> woo Well, you went from saying that you wouldn't ever really hang out there, and now you will, so now, now we know it's oppressive. It, it was oppressive. Now look at me. I'm well, Who's there every day? You're there every day Thank with you. that tuna can of yours. That's right. Uh, but, you know, what we have is, it's <laughs> as they call the great room, because we had it was claustrophobic. There yeah. was that wall yeah. that kept you in, and, it, and we had these darn, you know, cabinets that were like the drive-in window where you're driving through to get your burger, and I had to duck my head under. But now we have that wall that was bashed out, and it leads into this area where you can sit and you put your feet up and there's a fireplace. And and what's the first thing I noticed when I saw that fireplace? You, the, the, you said it was gorgeous. Fireplace glass. Fire, well, before we had the fireplace glass, we had a basic gas fireplace. Like, you have a yeah, gas fireplace, yeah. don't you? Is it right. gas? It, it, it gas? is, yeah. And isn't it true, Mr. Contractor, that mm-hmm. a lot of us have that goofy looking concrete piece of wood that's sitting in there? You mean the fire brick? Yeah, what is that? Before you, but is that, that is it a fire brick? Whatever it is, it's a faux piece of of a log yeah. that comes with your gas fireplace. Sure. And then there's a little oh, a that, gas oh, yeah, burner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a bad version of what I now have, which is a fake looking fire log, but it has embers oh, okay. that so glow we, that are so also had, fake. So we had a fake log with the with the with the gas, yeah. and then one you know pipe that sent out maybe five flames. Right. And it barely even heated up the It was the essentially room. like hobos warming their hands totally. over a, a you, you barrel. Had to, you had to be hovering over it to feel warm. It wasn't attractive. Well, no. anyway, fast forward to, I fell upon this great website and this beautiful product and I wanted to introduce you to it and, and share it because it is artistic and it heats up the room. And it's it's basically fire glass. And with us is Rebecca Barker uh, with Modern Rustic to talk about it. So thanks, Rebecca. Hi. Thank you for having us. So explain to everybody, we're kind of painting a picture that this is this is glass that comes in all different kinds of colors, and it's called fire glass because? Because what we use is tempered, tumbled glass. And so when we uh, tumble the glass and break it, it doesn't cut. So, 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 so by... Act- I'm sorry? So by tumbling it, it takes all the rough edges off of it. Correct. I see. And right. it stays clean all the time. You'd think that all of a sudden it would somehow get, like, ashy, smoky, but it doesn't. It stays clearer and, and with its pure color. 
correct. It's the clean burn. It's go go green. I mean, you're using natural gas, which is a, a clean burn, so you're not going to get any sooting or ash uh-huh. anywhere. So this is the, let me walk you through the process. Yeah. So Ed, your boss, and uh, came over to our house, and we had again this really terrible fireplace. He took out the old, what do you call the gas pipe that runs across that connects to your gas line? Whatever that. That's the burner. The burner. Mm -hmm. We had just one burner. I mean, it was just one pipe across. He brought in, I think, like a three or four prong. Correct. And then he brought in a bunch of materials, and it started out with painting the, well, we already had had to vacuum and, you know, shop vac and clean out our old fireplace. But he, now in this kind of quasi-clean but still not perfect-looking fireplace where the brick was, he brings out some spray paint, black spray paint that's meant for fire. And he's, they spray it so it has like a nice clear canvas clean canvas to show off the stones they lay down some i guess like it's a volcanic stone or what else you'd some other material some sand of some kind yeah you either use playground sand or you use crushed lava lava rock and then they topped it with some of this beautiful fire glass and we went with this i love the green shade that we went with it i i hope you like it too do you like the green the evergreen Oh, it's beautiful. Yeah. And and he put it all in there and then and after having now with this three prong prong our, our gas pipe, it I mean it the flame now, it exudes flames from all over. If you could see in studio right now, Cindy's waving her arms around as if she were David Copperfield and we were in <laughs> Vegas as she explains flames. Flames are coming. coming out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it, it really not only is it more artistic and beautiful, it becomes like a focal point, but it really is heating up the room. So explain how this glass, this fire glass really serves a purpose beyond beauty. Oh, yeah. It, it, it's beautiful. It gives you ambience, but it also gives you heat. Uh, the more glass you have in there, the more the heat is retained within the glass. I mean, we're turning the gas down a little bit, Eric, because it's getting warmer and warmer. Sure. And it's filling the room. Isn't that great? So, the gla- so, the, so does the glass actually retain and then radiate heat? Yes, it retains it. raises it. the temperature quite a bit. Yeah, it retains it and then it radiates. And even if you turn off the flame... Oh, a good half hour to an hour, you're still going to have heat coming out from that fireplace. Uh-huh. So why wouldn't you use this product? It's, it's just neat. It's beautiful. It's <laughs> clean. It looks amazing. So what's the? is there a downside to it at all? None. None whatsoever. But this is, well, it's only for gas fireplaces, right? Or can we use it in a wood-burning fireplace? Well, if you have a wood-burning fireplace, then you would have to plumb gas to the fireplace. It yes, has to you, be gas. Okay. Yes. And there's two types of gas. You can use natural gas. Or propane gas. Mm-hmm. Okay. And talk us through the different colors and looks, uh, because it was really hard for us to make our choice. Everything is so pretty. I mean, you go to the website, which is Mod, uh, Mod Rustic is the name of the company, but the website URL looks like Mod or almost Mode Rustic right. dot com. And, and then there's this bronze, right? And then there's coppers and reds and, and sky blue and even clear. I mean, it goes on and on. Yeah, we have every color under the rainbow. Uh, you know, it depends on the colors in your room. You can draw off the, the carpeting in the room, the color of, of the walls, the colors of the drapes. You just want a contrasting color of glass inside of the fireplace. And on the walls, you want either a dark or a light color, depending on the color of glass that you choose. So the, the wall essentially becomes like a, uh, a template or a back background mm-hmm. to show off the glass mm-hmm. in its best light. Right. Mm-hmm. So if you use a light color glass, then you're going to have the walls as a dark color and I vice see. versa. I got gotcha. you. And then, and then I've seen this applied to outdoor applications as well for gas fireplaces. Mm-hmm. It, it, it weathers perfectly fine, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. It can, it can be in rain, snow, you name it. it. It's going to retain the color. The color is never going to go away. Hmm. Now, what are some of the other trends that are going to, showing up in, in this whole world of fireplace design? What, what do you see coming in the future? Oh, what I see right now, the big trend is, is not only do they put fire glass in the fireplace, but we're using fireballs or geoma- geometric shapes. Yeah. So and, it's going to a whole other realm. It's a very contemporary look. And this cost basically is what anywhere from a couple hundred bucks to you can spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars, and you can do it yourself or, or have you guys come out and do it. Is that how it works? Oh, either way, it's a very easy installation. Um, it, it's a 10, 15-minute installation. 
uh, prices are going to range between 200 to 400 dollars depending mm-hmm. on the size of the fireplace so talk about some of these other things that you have the glass idea mm-hmm. and I have some friends who have gone with these bowls these other mm-hmm. they look like well I guess they're almost like a, a cream colored ball or I guess you could even get black and they're sitting there in the fireplace and the flames are surrounding these balls right. it's very pretty they come in various colors we're expanding our color range um, so you can either put these fireballs on the lava, you can put it on sand, or you can put it on top of the glass, just mm-hmm. depending on what you want for that room. How did this all come about? I mean, you guys invented this, right? Yes, we did. Why, why <laughs> did you come up with this? You, just, you saw a need that people want to enjoy their fireplace with, make it more of an artistic statement, or what? No, uh, Ed, the owner of the company, he was in the glazing business, and one day, you know, broke some glass and wanted to find a use for broken glass. Usually we just throw it away. So he originally was putting it in aquariums. And then one day he decided, let's try it in fire. And voila, here you go. Yeah, and I've seen, I I actually think I bought some of this glass for an aquarium about five or eight years ago because it's such a beautiful, again, contemporary look on a traditional theme. So same thing happened, obviously, with the fireplace situation. And some of the glass, it almost has... uh I don't know how you describe it. It has almost on one side a black or a gray tone. It has like a quartz feel. Like it just like came out of a Like a reflective property yeah. almost, yeah. And you call it reflective. Yes, we do. We have uh, just regular base glass, and then we have reflective base glass. And all that does is just re- obviously reflects the sun, natural light, or the firelight more so to make the glass glitter. All right. Well, let's check out that the website is modeerustic.com, but the company's called Moda Rustic. So uh, thanks for bringing us up to speed on this really cool mm-hmm. design. And, and you have to see the pictures. Well, you've seen it in person. But oh, yeah. those of you who haven't seen it yet, we're going to have the video. We're going to shoot that for the final reveal of the kitchen. And uh, you can see the pictures on the website at yourhomewizards.com. So thanks, Rebecca. Thank you. Again, thanks it's uh, Moda Rustic. Dot com. That's Neat. it. I yeah. love that yeah. stuff. It looks fantastic. I mean, look at it. The, the fireballs, the, and you get the crystal toppers. I mean, some of these words probably sound foreign, but when you go to the website, you start to imagine how you can really fancy up your website, uh, your website, your fireplace, pretty inexpensively. Absolutely. And, you know, it doesn't necessarily work for a very traditional look in terms of a fireplace, because I think you're going to want to go more to the, it looks like it's burning wood thing. Mm, you're right. But right, for this, right. it, and for your house, because yeah. you kind of have an amalgamation of, of two different styles right. that work perfectly, it's a perfect application. I mean, our house is not a contemporary house. We still have a very traditional house. No, but house. Your, your house reminds me of, uh, uh, what, what would I say? You know, there's like, what's that store that sells those great, beautiful women's clothes, but they also Nordstrom's. have furniture? No. <laughs> Anyway, we're out of time. Come on, I'll <laughs> we'll think get to of it after the break. Second. Eric Stromer, Cindy Dole, were, well, you got me it's thinking ecle- about something. It's eclectic and artistic is what okay. I'm trying to say. Home Wizards, we're back in the fly. So KFW News Talk 980. <laughs>